on YouTube. Hey everyone, thanks for joining me here on Teslanomics Live. I'm your host, Ben Sullins, and this show is a live broadcast I do every Monday where I look at the week's biggest Tesla news. And um, it is a bit longer, and after this post, I will have a comment that's pinned with each different story and the timestamp. So you can just jump straight to it. Don't think you have to watch the whole thing um, if you're only interested in one of the tidbits. Although, I don't know why you wouldn't wanna watch it because it is just that amazing. Okay, maybe not, fine. But anyways, um, thanks for joining me. Uh, and I have a few things I'm gonna share and then at the end we're gonna get into Q&A. If you do wanna be a part of that discussion, you need to get on the email list because that's where I send out the invites from and you can do so at teslanomics.co. So uh, let me fire up the uh, old screen share here and we will get started. I'm gonna turn on this guy and I'm gonna turn back over here and I will share my screen for those watching and joining me through Crowdcast. Um, share is not the button I wanted. I wanted the share screen button, which is that one. Application window, here we go. And we'll get a little infinity effect and it'll focus in, perfect. Okay, there we are. So, uh, first story of the day is talking about this crazy Tesla YouTuber that won a free next-gen Roadster after referring five million in sales. I don't know what this fake news is, but apparently 55 of you have used our referral code, um, as you can see on the page here, and that gives us a free Tesla next-gen Roadster, which I hear is going to be designed or unveiled in 2020, maybe produced a year or two after that. Who knows what's going on with this, but I just wanted to come out and say thank you um, for everybody that has used that because it does help the channel immensely. Um, not only do you get a discount and free supercharging and all those kind of good things, but we get really cool gifts and stuff, which then we turn into videos to share with you the experience. So if and when this happens, it all seems a bit up in the air right now. Uh, yeah, I will totally be doing a deep dive on the next gen Roadster, putting it through the ringer as best I can, hopefully inviting people that are much better car guys and you know just people that know that stuff better than I do to also join me because um, I'm sure they'll help uh, elevate that level of quality and content for you. Um, so yeah, so this is kind of an amazing thing that just happened, the news article posted uh, this, this morning and I have a video coming out um, in, a, in a couple hours here. I'm going to be posting it just kind of about the experience and how it happened and all that. So there's that. Um, still go get on the list. You can go to teslanomics.co slash TD and get on the email list. And what will happen is um, I'll, I'll actually provide you someone else's code. Um, I have obviously lots of friends and lots of other people that um, have Teslas. And so, yeah, I mean, since I'm maxed out, like in fact, if you go here and say design yours, um, it'll say, hey, sorry, Ben's maxed out. So there's that. Um, yeah, thank you a thousand times to everybody that used this and shared it with others. Um, I, I, I almost know every single person that came through because you went through my email list, but every now and then a few would pop in that I didn't know. Um, and I assume that's because of you guys sharing it with other folks. So uh, yeah, thank you, thank you, thank you. And uh, stay tuned um, for more info on that. And uh, one of the things that was funny about it was uh, I found this, this uh, web page or somebody tweeted it um, called top.teslastats.no. And what this is, is uh, the guy parsed the API and you can see, you know, basically where everyone's at with terms of how many referrals. Um, and I, being the data geek I am, built a little dashboard on top of that. So you can see from the referral, uh, referral um, program winners or people using the referral program, we've collectively saved 4.6 million pounds of carbon, of CO2. We've saved almost 440,000 gallons of gasoline, and we've referred um, almost 3,500 uh, people to Tesla. Now, this is actually uh, a recent number. This doesn't encompass the entire uh, a number of referrals at one of the events at the Model 3 handover event recently. Um, Praveen, the guy that runs the program, had mentioned that at that time, this was 
July, um, and so this may even not even include any of these, that they had, uh, the referral program in total had referred over 7,000 uh, new Tesla owners. And if we assume that um, that, that each one of those are uh, about $100,000, then you're looking at about $700 million in sales for Tesla through the referral program. Add in these 3,400, assuming they weren't included in those other 7,000, because this part of the program didn't begin until after that. Uh, we're, there are over a billion dollars in sales um, from word of mouth advertising, essentially. And so if any company is ever uh, hesitant on influencer marketing or word of mouth advertising or whatever, you know, referral programs or whatever, I mean, granted, Tesla is, has an amazing product and they kind of sell themselves, but this is a real testament to it. Um, and so I just kind of built this randomly for fun just to see, and you can kind of see which countries have the most. Um, the U.S. is kind of unfairly uh, a, a advantage here because this is where the majority of Tesla owners live. Um, but anyways, I just put that together. This will be on the blog later at teslanomics.co. Um, so yeah, so there you go. Uh, thank you again. Stay tuned for the video, kind of breaking that down and just sharing my experience and my gratitude, uh, which I there is no possible way I can really express enough of that um, to, to, to add up to what um, the support you guys have given me. So thank you again. Okay. Now on this show, what I do is I often talk about my long and my short. The long is the thing I like, the thing I'm, I'm long on, right? The term we use to describe the economy. And the short is something I don't like, something I'm short on. And this, the, the short for the week has to do with the uh, United Auto Workers protest in front of the Fremont plant. And uh, apparently this was a staged event from basically a union or, or yeah, the UAW that wants to unionize these workers. And it's just been, been a back and forth for a long time. And this comes after Tesla had reportedly fired some 400 or more uh, employees for performance reasons. They argue that they weren't for performance reasons, that they were in fact the higher paid people and and it's kind of a back and forth thing so i'll read you the the bullet points of this here it says um, leaders seeking to unionize tesla employees held a rally at the company's fremont plant california factory on tuesday the group denounced recent firings at tesla and accused the company of targeting workers who previously complained about working conditions at the factory a tesla spokesperson rejected the union supporters claims but said that the company respects their right to protest a number of Tesla employees were fired earlier this month after a round of performance reviews as the company struggles to ramp up Model 3 production. So that's the story. Now, my take is I'm not a fan of unions. Um, I, I don't, I mean, I understand where they came from and the purpose of them and all that. And I, you know, clearly there's arguments for and against, but I personally am not a fan. Um, but the bigger uh, concern I have here is that um, this, this is a, maybe a potential crack in the fabric of the culture at Tesla. And that's the scary part to me because um, to me, uh, if you have, if, if they let go of 400 people, even if that's you know the lower end of the estimate, if even if that number's right, um, at once for performance reasons, then uh, like I don't believe in that practice first off, but that to me signals a major flaw in their hiring practices which then signals a flaw in kind of the quality of the workers that they get. So I'm much more concerned about the company culture and hiring practices and maybe trying to push a little too hard too fast, bringing in people that aren't going to cut it. And then that leads to bigger problems for the companies, like we're hearing about delays for the Model 3, things like that. So that's a problem. Um, and this is, I'm short on this because this seems like a dumb kind of, I don't know, it just seems like, like like a very feigned attempt. Now, people, if they were fired for the wrong reasons and all that, hey, I totally, uh, you, you have every right to be pissed and to do whatever you feel is right. I don't like that this is something that apparently is staged by the UAW. That's what I don't like about this. So people can air their grievances. I'm not, I'm not arguing that. I'm just arguing that the UAW trying to organizing these people and, and do this it is kind of lame. And that's just because I personally um, don't think, don't see the value in unions um, in today's world. So there's my short for the week. I'd love to know what you think. If you're watching this after the fact, please leave a comment down below. Um, and next, we're going to move on to something uh, I'm, I'm long on. And this is um, Tesla turning back the power 
um, turning back on the power at a children's hospital in Puerto Rico. Um, this is Hospital de Niños, the children's hospital in San Juan. Um, they installed 7,000 solar panels. There are 3,000 patients at the hospital and 35 are critically ill. And um, they're back online because of this now. And because of this, you know, and Elon has also said this is uh, one of many more projects to come um, for Puerto Rico when it comes to Tesla and rebuilding them. So, uh, I love this. I love because to me, I'm a big fan of switching over to renewable energy, um, and green technologies such as solar with battery backups. Now, one of the big things with this is, um, you know, how big can it get? And in fact, I have a video coming out, um, either this week or next week, I'm sure, I'm not sure, depending on when we're scheduling it, um, about really diving into what it would take for Puerto Rico to switch over. Now, if you're familiar, Tesla's done this before. They did it in Tau, American Samoa, uh, and they, they're almost 100% renewable. Now, I think they are 100% renewable. The deal is that's almost 800 people. Okay, Puerto Rico is 3.4 million people. It's not quite the same scale. Then, you know, you could say, oh, well, they did it in, in Kauai, an uh, island in Hawaii. Yes, great. Again, very small in comparison and also didn't really cover, you know, 100% of it. Then they're, they're doing now the uh, Tesla, the, the biggest lithium ion battery in the world in South Australia, Southern Australia. I forget what. It's actually a state called that. I think it's Southern Australia. And, and that's amazing, but still not a, a fraction of what they would need um, to, to rebuild Puerto Rico. So I dig into those details and that data coming up in a video uh, very soon. But I love this and I hope you guys do too. Um, if anybody is watching that is from Puerto Rico or anything, please um, post a comment and, and let everyone know how they can help. Uh, I'm still like, it still blows me away that, that so many people there are without power and it's such a big thing. And um, it also, uh, I guess, angers me and confuses me that a lot of people don't understand that uh, that this is America. This is part of the United States. And so everyone there is a United States citizen. Um, all, uh, granted, you know, most of everybody speaks Spanish. Um, it doesn't mean that, that they're less deserving of any of the support than any other place in the country in the United, contiguous United, United States. So let us know how we can help um, if you are from there or know people from there, because um, I, like many, want to. Now, um, I'll, I'll talk a little bit about some uh, other uh, things happening with this, uh, and I'll put links in the description. I didn't bring them up here, but uh, <laughs> it, after this posted, and Elon was kind of talking about, hey, let's do this, uh, a tiny Montana firm won a $300 million deal to restore power, beating Tesla was the headline. This is from Futurism, and uh, it was a little town or a little company called Whitefish from Montana, and somehow they won this contract. Well, fast forward, not even a week, and Puerto Rico cancels this energy contract um, based on uh, basically suspicion about how they won the contract in the first place. So yeah, more to come. It's, it was kind of a, a wash in terms of, of the developments of it. Um, and the question I just have is, will Tesla become be a major part of rebuilding Puerto Rico? Uh, I hope they are, uh, but I, I also think that the main goal is to switch them over to more sustainable, renewable forms of energy, forget, uh, you know, Tesla themselves being the main provider, I think many other um, companies and stuff will step in and hopefully we'll be able to use this uh, disaster as an opportunity um, to fix a lot of the problems with the with the energy grid um, that they've had for a long time there. So there you go. Um, that's my long for the week. Love that. Now, next, I have some updates about TeslaCon. If you're new and aren't uh, initiated with this, TeslaCon is an online gathering of the Tesla and EV communities aimed at sharing ideas to inspire new ones and help us move towards a more sustainable future. There's the pitch. Now, what this will be like, it is almost is very like the Crowdcast uh, conversation we're having, where it's very highly interactive. We have questions, we have polls. Uh, you can ask um, and, and interact directly with some of your favorite Tesla tubers. Notably, our keynote speaker, Robert Llewellyn from the show Fully Charged, also a distinguished actor and comedian from the UK, if you guys are from there and you uh, probably know who he is. Also, Trevor Page from the Model 3 Owners Club, Jesse and Zach from Now You Know, Sal Lopez from Spain, the car guru who makes 
arguably the some of the funniest videos I've been seeing lately. Um, and a newcomer here, Kathy Chen, um, who has a channel called Te uh, Tesla Journey. Uh, we also have many more people uh, lined up, and there are um, uh, users, uh, community sessions, uh, where folks like yourself will be able to host a session if you have an idea um, and are trying to kind of get into this space or, or really want to share share what you know. So uh, go to teslacon.online. Ticket sales, I'm hoping we will announce later this week. You're going to start seeing a lot more about about it. Um, so get on the email list now, and that way you will get that early bird pricing. Um, if not, the price will be a bit more. Um, and we're not going to announce early bird pricing except to people on the email list, right? And we're not going to tweet it. We're not going to share it out because it is a special thing for the people that signed up for those updates in advance. And as you can see, uh, the countdown is coming. It's on December 16th, um, which is a Saturday. So you guys don't have to miss work or anything. You can just kind of have it up. And of course, afterwards, replays will be available. So if you miss any of it, um, you'll have access to that, which it will be exclusive. They won't be public um, at any point in time in the future. It'll only be available uh, to those that actually had tickets for it. So make sure to get on get on the email list there. Um, e even if you don't uh, buy the tickets or anything, that's fine. Uh, you'll, you'll have the opportunity opportunity to support um, in, in other ways. So stay tuned for that. Next, we have um, something that's really cool. I'm really excited about this. And it looks just like an ugly tunnel <laughs> under LA. Who knows what's going on? What is this? Well, apparently, um, Elon tweeted this photo, which is um, a part of the Boring Company, uh, his company's name that's making tunnels under LA for these electric skates the idea is you'll drive onto it it'll lower you down into a tunnel like this you'll travel up to 150 miles per hour which is about 240 kilometers per hour and then pop back up you know at your other destination so you won't actually be driving it'll be on a skate and it like it's happening this is crazy um and uh, so yeah some news about that okay so this is from teslarati and i'll read you a little bit about it then i'll read you what elon said um, the Boring Company's test tunnel that adjoins SpaceX and Tesla's design center in Hawthorne, California, is really starting to take shape. Serial tech entrepreneur Elon Musk posted an image on Saturday that shows a long run of track, pipes, and reinforcement inside a tunnel. In addition to providing a first look at a 500-foot stretch of the Boring Company's test tunnel, Musk also revealed plans for the company's first route that's expected to begin from the LAX airport and run parallel to major Los Angeles corridor Interstate 405 and north to U.S. Route 101. Um, Elon stated, uh, the first route will go roughly parallel to the 405 from LAX to 101 with on off ramps every mile or so. It will work like a fast freeway where electric skates carrying vehicles and people on pods in the main artery travel up to 150 miles per hour, 240 kilometers per hour, and the skates switch to the side tunnels to exit and enter. So you're flying down this. Uh, it's your stop. You, you, you skirt over, you get back up, you, you know, get out if you're in a pod or you drive off if you're, if you're on a car. Are, um, and then it comes back down and boom, you know, uh, off you go. Uh, I'm really excited about this. I don't know what to make of it. Uh, it still seems sort of like a pipe dream, pun intended, dad jokes. Uh, but we'll see, uh, we'll see if and when, um, when we can go on a ride, maybe that'll be, so part of the referral program, by the way, is that there are all these secret levels, right? And apparently I get to drive a boring machine, awesome. I think it'd be more fun to ride on one of these skates at 150 miles per hour or in one of these pods. Uh, but we'll see how it goes. Um, apparently there's all, there's should be like eight more secret levels, but they haven't unveiled anything except for the first two. Um, so there we go. We'll see how this goes. Uh, I'm excited about it. Let me know what you think. Would, you know, would you ride in one? Uh, I'm really curious. Next, I have some news from uh, fellow Tesla tuber and uh, good friend of the show, Trevor Page, uh, with the Model 3 Owners Club. And what is this? Him and Ken got to review a Model 3. Now, if you haven't seen this, you need to go watch it. Um, what they do is they really take this thing um, apart, essentially. Uh, every inch uh, it has, has been um, explored by them uh, in this video. It's about an hour long, um, maybe a little bit more than that, an hour and 10 minutes long. And um, yeah, they, they did a great job. And so uh, as they mentioned, one of the things is that they don't, um, uh, the software isn't complete, but the hardware is done. And so I'll just kind of skip around here. You can kind of see if you're curious about 
any detail of the Model 3. I mean, these guys really, really go in, in, into detail about every every question you could have. Um, so yeah, I'm excited. Uh, I I finished this uh, this past weekend, um, and it'll take you a while, but just do it in chunks, right? And and keep coming back to it. Um, leave comments and questions. Um, th they'll be great. But love love what they do, and um, I'm so happy that they got to do this. Uh, you know, we've seen other Model 3 videos out there, but this one is really the definitive Model 3 video. You must go watch it. Uh, you can just, you know, search for it on YouTube, or you can find it um, in the link in the description down below. Uh, also, uh, if, if you're unfamiliar with them, they have a website, model3ownersclub.com. Here they have some pretty cool merchandise. You can go get like some shirts and hats and stuff. Um, and then they have uh, a forum. So if you're into forums and you like doing that, you can go on there and you can um, uh, you can chat with other members. You can kind of have discussions around that. So there you go. Um, that's kind of what's going on with, uh, with the Model 3 Owners Club. And I'm super excited about that. I can't even, uh, I mean, it's a great video. So go watch it. Next, we have something that I think is pretty cool, and this is something uh, I'm really thrilled that I'm seeing. Uh, this is a Tesla-inspired Chinese automaker launches a first all-electric SUV. Uh, it's first for them, essentially. Um, and, and the headline is that Tesla open-sourced their patents in 2014 in the hopes of inspiring others to create their own electric cars. Hint, hint, GM, Nissan, Toyota. Come on, guys. Uh, three years later, Chinese company uh, Xiaoping sorry for the pronunciation, uh, Motors has debuted their first all-electric SUV, and it has a few similarities to the Tesla SUV. Uh, I love this. I, I want more companies to copy, essentially, the skateboard design and their patents and all that. Um, they're using the same 18650 cells that the Model S and X are currently using, and this one gets about 300 kilometers on a charge, which is 186 miles. Not nearly as good as um, as the Model X, but um, yeah, I, I just love that this is happening. You know, perhaps they can sell it for a lot cheaper and it's still a great SUV or something like that. But you can see kind of the design differences and similarities there um, in that shot. So I'm excited about this. I hope more companies do this. I have no clue whether or not this company will actually, you know, uh, be successful with this or anything like that. But hey, I, I love the idea of open sourcing your designs um, so we can kind of keep uh, keep this revolution going. I think that'll be a great catalyst. I don't know why companies, some of the other big automakers aren't, you know, jumping on board and just saying, Hey, look what they did. That works great. Let's copy, you know, 90% of that or whatever makes sense for them. So there you go. Next, I have an article I sent out to my email list uh, yesterday, I think, on Sunday. And uh, I really like Vox and I really like a lot of the stuff they do, especially their YouTube videos. I'm so jealous of their graphics um, and how they use data to tell stories. I really love what they do. Um, and it's an insp inspiration to me in a lot of ways in, in terms of how to tell a story. Uh, this is a, a kind of a longer article. Um, I definitely recommend you go check it out if you want something good to read. Uh, it goes in really in depth to the whole, con the whole concept of um, tackling climate change by electrification. And the main point, and I've made this before, and, and, and they reiterate it here, is that um, by, by connecting everything to the grid, essentially, you'll uh, as the grid gets cleaner, there will be a network effect on anything that uses electricity from it. So like cars, like your home, like your water heater, if you get an electric water heater, or which are incredibly not efficient right now, but point being, the more appliances and things that you use that are just pure electric, um, as the grid gets cleaner, it will have a, a profound impact, uh, unlike gas cars, where really you can make a more efficient gas car, and then for the life of it, it essentially burns as much CO2, you know, or it's it has kind of like a fixed rate of, of uh, polluting the environment, whereas... Um, an electric device or vehicle, as the grid gets cleaner, will also get better. So I love their main point here, and this is a really good article, I think, good to read. Now, um, next, I have sort of a rumor. This is a very recent article, and it has to do with the Model 3. And so this is talking about um, the VIN number. And uh, one of the things with the, with the VIN number, which is kind of the vehicle identification there, uh, it, uh, you can kind of decode it, and one of the things is usually the last four digits indicate the uh, what number vehicle has been produced. It's kind of an incrementing number, right, from one to now it looks like we have up to 2,600 here, 2,639. Mm -hmm. And this comes from the National Highway Traffic Safety Administration ahead of the Tesla Q3 report, which is in two days. And so the theory being that potentially that um, while, while last quarter they fell far short of their stated goal of 1,500, they only got 220 
um, and then you know plus the other uh, 30 that were delivered, then uh, this would be a significant jump and something that's really great for, uh, for for kind of that production ramp, which could be me put them back on track, which would help the stock, which has kind of been on a slide lately. So uh, the numbers here don't correlate exactly um, with one to one. So I'm not sure what this means, um, but it is interesting um, to talk about it a little bit. So there we go. Okay, now we're going to switch over to the Q and A section. This again is on Crowdcast. And let me fire that up. I'm going to stop sharing my screen on Crowdcast, open up the questions, and hopefully everything is good. I'm going to take a drink of water, give you guys a second to vote here, and then we'll go from there. <laughs> uh, yeah, and sorry for the loud noise outside, the motorcycles and construction and all that part of not having a building and just doing this at your home. Okay, uh, Gabor, Gabor, Gabor asks, will Elon personally deliver your next-gen Roadster? Uh, yeah, no, he's not going to. Um, I That would be amazing. Uh, in fact, I even emailed them in advance and said, hey, um, I will trade all of all of the, the referral credits in for Elon to just uh, keynote TeslaCon, right? It'll get, take an hour and a half of his time or so and just one day from on a Saturday, he can do it from anywhere as long as he has a good a good laptop. Um, and they kind of said, yeah, no thanks. Um, so maybe, yeah, I don't know. Maybe because this is so far out, um, it will change his mind. Because I do plan on doing TeslaCon again and again, assuming it's it's successful. So thanks for the question and thanks for the, thanks for the congrats. Felix asks, uh, do you or did you already update your Model 3 delivery date calculator based on the most recent months and quarter deliveries? Uh, no, I did not, and I do not plan to because the delivery calculator at this point, I would say, is 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 uh, so out of whack with what's going on with them, and the best estimate is going to be what Tesla gives you on their website. So if, you, uh, if you're unfamiliar, you can go to um, tesla.com slash Model 3 or whatever it is, just go to the Model 3 page, and then down there, there's a button that says, like check your delivery status. Now I know that that's not wasn't nearly as scientific as, as ours, um, but uh, it, it it's the official estimate. So I would have to go with that. And it, with how things have been going, kind of rocky for them, it, it's it's complete guesswork at this point. So um, you know it was nice and fun to, to to come up with that in the beginning, but I would say at this point, um, your best bet is just using theirs. Uh, I do plan, and tell me what you guys think of this. I do plan on offering a um, uh, a, a what does Tesla call it? An affordability calculator. Um, and I wonder if they uh, if they do it, then, then I won't do it. But, uh, you know, I've built a few calculators and tools. Uh, by the way, we have a, a new website that if you guys haven't checked it out, hopefully you guys like that. I tried to redesign it to be more uh, video user friendly. And um, one of the things I want to add there is, is this, the idea of, okay, um, I can go figure out what my Model 3 costs by choosing all the options. What if I want to go the other way? What if I say, hey, look, here's my budget. Here's my monthly budget total, including charging, including insurance, including everything else. What can I afford? And basically, you just punch in the number, and then it'll spit out a few different options for you. And so they have this for the S and the X, and I thought, I don't know why they don't have it for the three. Um, it wouldn't be that hard to build since I already have all the kind of code and logic to do it the other way. Um, so I was thinking about doing that. Let me know what you guys think. Um, but yeah, as far as the delivery calculator goes, unless we get some really detailed data coming out from them, which I don't expect, um, I, I would just recommend going and using theirs. Thanks for the question. Vic asks... <coughs> Excuse me, I want to take a drink here. When Tesla comes out with the all-wheel drive Model 3, if the performance model isn't available, then uh, will it simply be a software update or will it have to be totally new order to accommodate the performance and possibly ludicrous modes? Um, that's a great question. Uh, I believe it will be available by then. Um, and hopefully, yeah, you can buy it at that time. And if not, it'll be like the full self-driving thing where it'll be available soon. Uh, you know, what I keep hearing is that the hardware for the car is done, is good. It's the software that's trying to play catch up. So I wouldn't be surprised if they sell it and you can't buy it immediately, or I'm sorry, you can buy it with it, um, but you don't get it immediately. So we'll see. But that's that's my guess. I don't have any actual um, details on that yet. But um, Elon, I believe, said early 2018 is when we'd start, then when they'd start making the all-wheel drive model. That's only a few months away. So we ought to know uh, fairly soon. Thanks for the question, Vic. 
Gary in New York asks, it seems Tesla does not support Apple CarPlay. That's correct. Um, even Chevy has it in the Bolt. Any reason for this? I don't know. I don't know what the reason is. That is correct. It does not support Apple CarPlay, nor does it support Android Auto or whatever it's called. Um, the Bolt does have it, although it's clunky. You can see my review of it where it didn't really, it took a while to set up and didn't work. Um, yeah, I, I, don't, I don't know what to say. Uh, I, I wish they did. Uh, even if they, I mean, so first off, uh, Siri sucks compared to the Android ver equivalent. Uh, I do have an iPhone, but uh, I do miss that feature. And um, even even with Siri being so lacking in her ability, um, oh, you know, it'd be nice if you could even program it to just hit the button to enable Siri. Um, especially now, uh, the latest iOS updates uh, automatically go into driving mode when you're driving, so you can't even use your phone, which I love. Um, but you can hold down the button, and then while you're driving, just hold it down, and Siri will pop up. So I don't want to have to touch my phone at all. I wish I could do it from the same command on the on the on the steering wheel that I can just do the voice commands. Uh, but I don't know why they don't do that. That is one area where I feel Tesla could really improve is in the voice voice commands and voice controls. So yeah, thanks for the question. I don't. Know know the reasoning behind it maybe they feel they can do a better job um who knows um but yeah the, I, I assume that we'll see a lot of updates into that um after the model 3 starts to starts to roll out walt asks any word on when the configuration will hit the general public man i don't know um uh, supposedly uh six to eight weeks from a couple weeks ago is is what elon was saying um in a tweet so we'll see. Uh, I mean, yeah, you know, my delivery estimate was October to December. I thought I would get an invite early sep or late September and hopefully get a delivery in November. I'm at this point hoping that I'll get it before the end of the year. Uh, but we'll see. Um, it, it may be a while still, but it guaranteed as soon as I, and, and I'm, you know, living in California, current Tesla owner and uh, made my reservation on day one. So I should be getting an invite pretty early in the line here because of those factors. So if and when I do, um, I will certainly share that with you guys. Maybe I'll live stream it like, you know, choosing my Model 3 uh, or I will um, uh, or I'll just record a video and then share it with you afterwards. Either way. Um, so stay tuned. Uh, Nick asks, if I have the cash to put down the reservation deposit on Model 3, but not 100% on the finances for the entire vehicle, should I still put the deposit down? Uh, I say yes, because you're still going to be waiting a long time. I have a decent amount saved, but not my desired down payment. However, I plan to continue to save heavily for the next 12 to 18 months to get the car. Yep, uh, I hate to wait a year and then save an additional year for reservation. Can I put the purchase date back if the car is available sooner than I'm ready? I, I don't, uh, yeah, I don't, I mean, yeah, keep saving. Um, I don't know. It, it, it may be a while. If you put it down today, it may be like, you know, close to 2020, honestly, um, depending on the delivery ramp and how those things go and suppliers, et cetera, et cetera. But the sooner the better, um, you know, uh, if, if you are serious about getting it. Uh, but then again, you know, uh, depending on the price and those kind of things and what options you choose, which again, you can go on our website, teslanomics.co. And I, I really try to conclude every detail that we do know of with the price of, um, so you can see what your price would be. So yeah, I would go do that and, and figure it out. But if you're sure you want one, then then do it now. And then yeah, you know, just just hustle until until you know until that time. Uh, thanks for the question, Nick. Walt asks Ben, will the three eventually be able to charge faster if Tesla comes up with a faster charging system without damaging the battery? Um, well, it. it it, it's going to charge pretty fast now. I believe it's a similar rate to the S and the X. I believe a 30-minute charge will get you 170 miles for the long-range battery. Um, I think if, if you're if you're talking about the the rumor of the um, uh, of the uh, supercharger V3, then I don't know about that. That may be a, a separate thing. But chances are you'd be able to upgrade. Um, so yeah, I wouldn't, I wouldn't worry too much about it. Um, in terms of that, it should charge plenty fast now. Um, and we'll see what else they come out with. Um, if they do come out with supercharger V3 soon, I would imagine that the model threes will be, be supporting it. If not, you'll be able to upgrade later. So thanks for the question. Uh, all right. Mel asks, Hey Mel, thanks for joining me yet again. I drive with the rear view camera always on. Okay. That seems dangerous. Uh, <laughs> but there seems to be some inaccuracies. Um, cars appears to be a lot further back when they actually are. This is most noticeable when I stop at a traffic signal. A car may be three feet behind me, but the camera makes it look like it's 60 feet. That's pretty far. It's a big difference. 
Um, I think this has to do with the the lens being a fisheye lens, um, and and in order to you know so it can see a wider thing, and, and that's probably why it feels that way. Um, it's probably not meant for this, um, and I doubt uh, there are many people that drive with it always on. Um, I, I, although I will admit, my son now is is a forward facing in his car seat, and he loves to watch it, so sometimes I have it on. But um, yeah, I don't think they'll change that. I think it has to do with the camera lens, um, not necessarily a software thing. So, so there you go. John asks, do you know of the Solar Edge EV chargers? Hey, John, did you email me about this? Um, if you are, uh, if you did, uh, I am not aware. Um, if you work for Solar Edge or if you know someone there that wants to reach out and have me do a review or something, yeah, please um, have them get in touch. I'm interested. Um, I'm probably going to get a Tesla wall charger eventually. Right now, I just have the mobile charger um, where it works great. My garage is kind of a mess. You know, uh, renovating a house takes years. So we haven't gotten to the garage yet. Um, and I probably won't because we're, we're thinking about doing a second story on top of the garage. So, yeah, I don't really care about, about all that. I mean, if in honestly, um, I probably wouldn't pay for it because I've already installed the, the 1450 outlet. But if somebody wants me to do a review, I'd be happy to do that so that you guys know kind of what, what's going on with it. Um, I do have a solar edge inverter for my solar panels, um, which are going to be right next to my power walls whenever those show up. But, uh, yeah, yeah, let them or me know. Um, I haven't seen or heard anything about it, though. Thanks for the question. Uh, John asked, Ben, on your Tesla Model 3, have you decided on color wheels and range? Yes, long range, black with aero wheels. Um, aero wheels because they're hideous and I'm going to get rid of them. And I'm going to replace them with the 19-inch turbines currently on my Model S. And when the 21-inch Arachnids show up, I'll put those, which are should be soon. Um, those will go on my Model S. Um, and then the 19s will go on the, uh, on, on the Model 3. So there you go. Jeremiah asks, I started shopping for a cheaper sub 45,000 2013 to 2014 CPO Model S um, about two months ago, around the time there's an ample supply. Uh, I unfortunately hesitated. Yep, over the last month, it seems there's been very few. Yeah, uh, I, I can't tell you what it is, um, why they come and go like that, but they do. So uh, as I've been preaching all along, if you find one that, you're, that you love and it's, it's the one, um, pull the trigger immediately. Do not wait because that happened to me a few times actually before I bought mine. Um, so yeah, keep your eye out there. There's lots of websites. Yeah. EVCPO is a good one. Tesla inventory is another one. Um, there's, there's a few others. Um, so yeah, yeah, definitely just don't, don't hesitate, man. I can't tell you why though. Um, it's just, you know, seasonality maybe. Um, also sometimes Tesla, what they do, they actually take them off, do some updates to them or something like that, then put them back on. So, um, I would definitely go with the CPO one though. I, I'd be really hesitant to buy a non CPO one. John asks, who and how do they determine when the where next supercharge will be built? Uh, can't tell you. There's probably a team at Tesla that, that studies this, I would imagine. Um, I don't have any other insight. But there is a website that you can, on their supercharger website, you can see the planned ones if, if that's, you know, of interest to you. So go check that out. We're going to go, we're going to go rapid fire a little bit here. Uh, Anupam um, asks, Anupam, um, there's a thread going on Tesla Motors Club that says that there might be an update to the interior of the Model S mid-2018. I have heard that from other people. I don't have any details, though. Interesting to, to, to wait and see. William asks, any update on uh, what is known about the 75D uncorking? Um, I, I, I'm, I'm not familiar. Um, I, I do not know, so I don't have an update. I am surprised. Everyone, I, you know, I feel like we've heard this a, a dozen times before. I'm going to check on Tesla.com right now that they're stopping selling the 75D, but I believe it's still there. Okay, let me see. Model S. Yes, I want to buy a Model S. I'm, I'm looking on Tesla.com right now. That website is so slow. Can't even handle it. Yeah, it's still there. I don't know what the deal is. Yeah, who knows? Okay, anyways. Uh, sorry, unfamiliar. Um, but uh, if I ever find out more, if you have more, please let me know. Grant asks, will suppliers seeming to be the main pro with suppliers be seeming to be the main problem with the delayed release of the S and now the three? Do you think Tesla will end up making 100% of the cars or just buying the company like they did with Grumman? Well, I know they want to make a lot of the uh, pro uh, parts themselves. Um, that's part of the, the Gigafactory plan, you know, um, but I, I don't see, I, I don't know. 
um, it really doesn't make sense, right? You're gonna have to have a strong supply chain and a lot of different suppliers in order to make this. It doesn't really make sense to do it 100% yourself, I don't think. Um, and I just say that because it doesn't appear that many other car makers that do that and they seem to be incredibly successful. So yeah, we'll see. Um, yeah, it could be, but but I, I, I'm, I'm not really thinking um, that that's gonna happen. Maybe they'll take some, as much or you know what makes sense to uh, do themselves, but in other parts, like, like for example, mining aluminum. Mm, you know they're probably gonna and i know they get raw aluminum in and outcome cars but you know probably not gonna go mine aluminum yourself right you can just buy that from someone else so some parts maybe yes and, and some parts maybe no no way would it be 100 percent in my opinion mel asks when do you think we'll have a model y event oh i can't wait um yeah, I don't know how far they are. I'm sure they. I'm sure they have uh, some designs coming. Uh, people rumored that maybe they'll unveil that because they're supposed to be a, a big surprise at the semi event. They also could just be saying that to to get interest because you know people that care about the semi are far fewer than care about say the Model Three. Uh, but yeah, we'll see. Um, I hope it's soon. I really think that's going to be a major hit. But really, you know, they need to get through production hell here, and the Model Three just needs to be flowing out before I think they need to move on to anything else. Maybe the design team can do some stuff, but until then, I would say that's it. So yeah, stay tuned. Pomp asks, uh, do you think we will see the autopilot coast to coast drive this year? That's a great question. Uh, <sighs> I don't know, man. I really don't know. It seems like with everything else going on, this is a, a, a an added um, distraction. Uh, and and uh, you know, Elon, I know, over promises on a lot of things. So this year, I don't know. Probably within Q1 or Q2 of next year, I would I would feel pretty confident about that. I hope it's this year. Um, I'm just not sure. Yeah. Dane asks, uh, Do you believe that Model Three owners will still will see a referral system? I don't know. Uh, I, I doubt it. Um, I, I don't think so. Uh, it does, doesn't appear that the margins are big enough there or anything like that, but we'll see. Maybe they will. Um, I'm sure that would do incredibly well for them. John asks, uh, in Ken and Trevor's review, they did a quality... Uh, in Ken and Trevor's review, did the quality of the interior of the Model S seem... Model, Model 3 seem premium to you? Vegan leather didn't seem all that nice to me. Uh, well, okay. I mean, I, yeah. So you can, you can look at their review. I think it was some kind of... Alp, um, Alcatraz, I forget the the, the name, uh, some kind of suede. Uh, but yeah, I mean, w when I rode in one and you know got to see the interior, I liked it. I wouldn't say it was premium. Um, it certainly was nice. Uh, I think the Model S and X have better interiors. And then that being said, uh, I think things like Audi and some of the other cars have even nicer interiors, um, with the exception of all the buttons and weirdness, just the, the quality of the materials. So yeah, I don't know. Um, I think they're good. I think I think it's you know better than a lot of cars out there. But it yeah it certainly doesn't compete with an actual luxury car. Um, and I don't think it's as nice as the S. But you know hey I'm not I'm not really a car guy. You know I'm just a data guy that loves Tesla. Thanks for the question, John. Okay, last one. Uh, what's the latest on the semi? Well, waiting to hear. November sixteenth, only a couple weeks away. We're going. Um, uh, I'm actually going to have a filmer with me, and so we're going to do a whole vlog about the event, first impressions, details, reviews, et cetera, et cetera, et cetera. So stay tuned. Um, me and um, the guys from Now You Know, I think are the only Tesla tubers going. Maybe some other people will be. Uh, it certainly seems that there's not as much interest. Um, and for a lot of folks, you know, they just went to the Model 3 event, so it's like another trip. And, you know, if you live in Europe, for example, like this is just not going to work. For me, you know, it's only about a two-hour drive away. So, yeah, there you go. Um, I I'm going to go and uh, stay tuned. We'll have a lot more stuff coming out on that soon. I, I hope it's great. Um, I really think this could be a game changer, bigger than, than a lot of the other ones, a lot of the other products they make. So, yeah, we'll see where we go from there. Thanks for the question, Terry. Okay, folks. Well, I appreciate everyone for that joined me today um, on YouTube. We're watching this live and those here on Crowdcast. As I mentioned, if you want to be a part of this discussion, if you want to ask questions like you just saw uh, there, go get on our email list at teslanomics.co. Um, and for everyone else uh, that is already a member, thank you for joining me yet again. Um, stay tuned this week. I am going, I don't know if I mentioned this, maybe I should have, uh, I am going to be reducing the videos just down to one uh, produced video and one live video, like the one right now, um, each week. And then occasionally I'll have a Friday video. Uh, when I first added the Friday video, the idea was to add other things like um, funny videos or things that weren't directly like analysis about Tesla, but kind of expanding into other areas. And um, it's just, it, it turned out with TeslaCon and everything else, 
It just turned out to be uh, more than I could honestly handle by myself. And so what I'm going to do, still want to do some of those videos, but I'm going to do those occasionally. Um, and then you will have one produced video still coming out on Wednesday and then the live stream on Monday. So I uh, hope to see you back here this Wednesday. Um, and also stay tuned here coming up in an hour or so. We'll all be posting kind of my reaction video and stuff about winning um, the next gen Roadster. So yeah, thanks everyone for joining me and I will see you all back here soon. Cheers.